We back at T. For today's video and the beginning of my short series or limited series, we're gonna be paying homage to the late great Zach TV. Yes, Sersky. And we're gonna be going into a perspective of how and why Zach TV was ahead of his time. Excuse me, five to six, seven, eight, nine years ago. Way ahead of his time as far as blogging, interviewing, or just simply getting other people to take the liking of certain individuals that we may not have known that existed. For the first up, we're going to go, and all these people are going to be people that's passed away just like the late, great um, Zach TV. So we're paying homage to all of the late, um, all of the fallen soldiers that we didn't lost throughout the time and many more, plenty more than passed on since then. But we're going to just take a dive into where all of the actual real niggas really killed off. Where they all really killed off. So now we have the twos and the fuse that's left that really can't even vouch for the people that have passed for the most part. We're going to start off with FBG Brick. Duck brother. He said some very interesting things inside of this video right here. skip ahead a little bit you see Zach was the type of person when he interviewed you he made you he gave you that energy and made you feel like you want to accomplish more than what you was doing for the most part people didn't get on Zach TV and just start acting a complete ad only one that didn't have no sense but for more a um, majority of people that he actually fucked with, these were a lot of people that was lost in an illusion of the cycle of violence and religion and all of this poverty. But he was an outside thinker. So in return, when you were outside or out of the box thinker, when you get around certain people, they started to look at themselves as like, hey, hold on, I need to look at myself a little bit better. I want to look at myself like Zach TV look at his self or has, um, or better yet, how he look at me. He don't look at me as FBG Brick, just some regular street nigga. No, he look at you as a young man would. Um, and it with potential. Nothing more, nothing less. He's seen the potential and majority of the people that he interviewed. 
So some people were more deeper in the streets than others. Like we're going to have on display where a lot of these people have been passed on now. But the simple fact is that if we hit all the people that's speaking like this and actually got the motivation to do better, they're being knocked off the chessboard. In my whole crowd, guys, you make real views. You know what I'm saying? I just feel like we put, put on the right platform, you know what I'm saying? Right resources. We'll go far, bro. You know what I'm saying? And that's what all of us. Nasty. All of us in the urban community, all we need is the right foundation and the right resources to be able to think outside of the box, to start to use our imagination to, in return, start to accumulate more wealth. That's why I say Zach TV was ahead of his time. He didn't care about how many views that he was going to get or the shock value behind um, certain incidents that happened with certain people. No, he left a lot of street shit in the streets, honestly. And he wasn't the type that really be asking no police type question. You know what I'm saying? And the second time, the second, you know what I'm saying? Um, the second, uh, motherfucker might be from out west or the birds or somewhere. And motherfucker, like, I don't know, bro. I ain't know what's up, bro. Who wouldn't believe that shit? Just sometimes certain motherfuckers I respect that sing a song. But instead of saying two can name, they'll say one of their dead ops or some shit. You know what I'm saying? That's how I respect. Like, what the fuck about the motherfuckers saying them key dirt and all that shit, bro? You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, you're not finna sit here in my face and do it. What? You know what I'm saying? Well, at least you said, basically. <clears throat> like, hey, I had one situation, bro. Let's hear from out west. You know what I'm saying? Walked up to me. Hey, bro, you two of you, bro? You know what I'm saying? Ooh, you dunk better. Well, I'm dead, bro. Ooh, y'all, I'll be fucking with Shorty. Ooh, ooh. Then it turned around, like, 20 minutes later, singing a key song that's disrespectful to us too, so I'm like, check it, bro, what's to you, bro? What you want you say? Nigga just, you know what I'm saying? Then turn around to some fuck shit. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Hey, one thing about it, bro, I ain't gonna lie. Turn around shit or not, bro. I didn't lose a fight in that county, bro. I told you he was fighting. Fighting, what is that? But a lot of my fights I got away with, bro. I was beating niggas ass and just, you know what I'm saying? A lot of times that's when the fights are really going down is when people going back to jail. Jesus is, and that's why later on in the interview he's going to start to go into certain people that he's seen in jail, and it wasn't really the same energy that motherfuckers be having outside in the world, for real, for real. And that's what I understood for uh, um, when I was locked up back in the day, that same energy that you got on the street, and if you see this nigga in, the, um, in jail, you better have that same energy, or you gonna have to just be like, no, I ain't on that, and motherfucker gonna give you the choice, like, oh, okay, cool, I, I know you ain't on that. We squad up shit all the time. All these niggas, you know what I'm saying? They don't. You know what I'm saying? Who's your favorite Chicago rapper? Who's my favorite Chicago rapper? FG Duck. Yeah. But niggas play out the history and the fact that a motherfucker be here or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Don't want to fuck their boo, that's why I'm mad. Don't want to fuck their boo, that's why I'm mad. The man told me, though, the man was in there for a 7500 bar. Now, mind you, all these niggas out there laughing at me because I stayed in the county for four years for 7500. Man, none of my brothers or my homies got no record deals, none of that shit. You know what I'm saying? Ain't got no consistent show money coming in. Notice that he said none of his niggas. So he already knew that his mama, which is AKA Mama Duck, was not going to be able to buy him out for $7,500. So he had to sit in the um, county for four years and fight, um, fight his case. So then in return, excuse me, Mama Duck is now, since both her sons have passed away, unfortunately, now Mama Duck goes on to say cheese and then in return saying nobody doing nothing for her after since um, after Duck died. You couldn't even buy out your own son for four years for seventy five hundred dollars. If somebody can't accumulate seventy five hundred dollars in four years, then I guess it ain't meant to buy that motherfucker out. But the whole um, the whole point of it is, if you know you ain't been having no money to even help your own kids out of such a situation, what do you think 
when if something happened to your kids that's more or less the breadwinner for the group, something happened to them, what makes you think they gonna have any type of money to start pitching in or just giving you money and shit or trying to look out for you when they gotta look out for themselves? Cause in return, Duck was looking out for them when he was out. So they was trying to goddamn hope that he was gonna be able to take everybody out of the hood. So you can't expect these same young men to in return that still live in Chicago, still got to um, fend for their life to um, start giving you money and resources and looking out for you when they got kids and they own family. That don't really make sense. But you shouldn't have got on say cheese saying all of that shit when you, your son didn't mention you like, man, my mama tried to do what she could and nobody else can get the rest of the money. No, he had, he needed the whole $7,500. that shit was giving out all the music for free. Inky D from 600. He was waiting on one of his rap buddies to send his ass two thousand dollars on a seventy five hundred dollar bond. Same as um, bond he was sitting in there for, but a month later he's still sitting in there. And he probably did get bonded out way quicker than he did. But at that time, uh, Lil Durk and all the BDs, they was a little more up than goddamn FBG ducking them at that time. So it probably took a little more time. But if the way they, they was fronting, they moving, saying like they was just balling all out. Why y'all got niggas, if you only, only he, need, he only need $2,000, well, it would take a month to send a nigga $2,000 if you Lil Durk, Chief Keith, and all them 600 type shit. Niggas be front, they moving. Them niggas really don't be having shit. And that's the sad part about it. And this is why I say a lot of the real niggas is actually already gone, man. And the ones we got left, they just taking on a persona of all the dead niggas that they um, didn't know. And that's the sad truth. Tell us. Oh, knock it off. Same shit with Bay Zoo. You know what I'm saying? Just in the hole with the nigga Lil Durk supposed to bond them out on Father's Day. You know what I'm saying? Then come get him. You know what I'm saying? 75. Exactly. Nigga had a $7,500 bond too. Bay Zoo was sitting in there supposed to be bonding them out on Father's Day. You know, shit happened. But if you Lil Durk and you got all this money, like I said, they probably did come get him out a little, little bit later, but just not right then and there. But the simple fact is when niggas in jail, Telling other people in jail, like, yeah, they're gonna come get me this day. And then it don't happen that day, motherfuckers in jail be looking at you like, damn, bro. You might as well, you just might as well not even say what day they was gonna come get you. And they say, yeah, I'm waiting on um, phone them to come through. But as soon as you didn't put a specific day on it, then now they gonna be looking at you, fool, and gonna be looking at the niggas that goddamn supposedly said they gonna do this for you on this day. Now looking at them niggas like, nigga, y'all just as fool as this nigga, man, because y'all ain't really goddamn rocking with each other, how y'all saying, or y'all ain't really. Goddamn, got the bread how y'all saying y'all really do. If y'all got niggas in here for $7,500 bonds and shit, and y'all got all these chains and all these cars and all the other uh, um, uh, extravagant ass shit. $5,000 bonds. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know a lot of shit, bro, as far as like take them niggas not real, bro. Like, I ain't just trying to expose those niggas on no fuck shit, bro. But when niggas play that role, like, they super real and they ain't, bro. That's exactly. Shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? And that's what, what came by saying they've been forced to be real. Okay. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's why I say a lot of these niggas that's now, these rap niggas, all of these niggas in general, they just taking on the persona of other dead niggas that they known, that they knew that was actually real niggas, man. Simple as that, or real street niggas. It's easy to take on the persona of somebody that you know can't defend what you um acting like. Summer, summer 2017, man. Got the two weeks here. You got countless videos. TV the style from the style. Nah, we out, man. RP Zach TV. Shout out.